Hello everybody, and we're about to continue our Let's Play series of Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. In our last episode, I believe... Let's see... We, could, we, had, we finally got the sea gates opened, so I think we are on our way to a new area soon. Okay, so currently in Puerto Valor. Board the Salty Stallion again. Right, because we just completed that side quest, getting the floral coral for that couple. I was tempted to actually go to Mount Hang Lai, but it feels like they want us to do this first. I'm not quite sure if we should explore that far away. Okay, board the Salty Stallion and sail down the Valor Sauvage channel from Puerto Valor. Should be right over here, I believe. There's our pal, Cervantes. Give him a nice thank you wave, everybody. Why so Mondo? Is it him? I wonder if that's his son. That'd be interesting. <laughs> for opening the sea gates of Puerto Valor and getting access to the open ocean. I wonder if Cervantes is Silvando's dad or something. That'd be pretty cool. Crevens! All six orbs to reach Yggdrasil. Search every corner of Erdrea to find them. Interesting. I'm heading into some fog. 
Ugh, where did all this horrible fog come from? I can't see a thing. Hey, Sylph, what's going on? I'm truly mystified. But whatever it is, I don't like it. Steering hard a starboard! are clearing. I can see light up ahead. Where in the world are we? Wow. Interesting. The Strand. It's like a little oasis of an island. Another mini metal. Sun bleached seashell. What a pretty little island this is. It looks just like the one in the picture. I always said to Veronica that I'd like to go there and to meet the handsome prince who lived there too. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. Maybe Rav has something. Fascinating. Judging by the shape of the prow and the state of the planks, I wouldn't be surprised that this boat was built long before even I was born. Lorian Triangle. What a strange place. It's almost like being in a dream. to catch me in a net. You're different from most other human beings that I've met. My name's Michelle. I'm sorry if I gave you all a fright. It, it's just I thought my car was back and I got all excited. Wow. I can't believe I'm talking to a real live mermaid. But anyway, who's this car you keep talking about? He's a tender-hearted fisherman from Lona Lulu Bay. He promised he would meet me here upon our wedding day. Your wedding day? I didn't even think humans and mermaids could get married. At first I was the same. I thought we'd never be together. I thought the mermaid's burden would keep us apart forever. For if a mermaid leaves the sea, and makes the land her home. If ever she gets wet again, she melts away to foam. But when I told my Kai I couldn't come to live with him, he said, in that case, Shell, you better teach me how to swim. And so I got the blessing of the queen beneath the sea. He's going to come to Nautica and live down there with me. Oh, that's wonderful news. Congratulations. 
But he's supposed to meet me here so we can be together. And I've been waiting for him now for what feels like forever. I know he'd never break his word. He's not that sort of person. But the longer that he stays away, the more my worries worsen. I know it's rude to ask you, but I beg, I plead, I pray. Could you go to Lona Lulu and make sure my Kai's okay? Hmm. So you're from the bottom of the sea, where the giant pearl from the story went. I wonder... Aha! How about this? If we go and check on your fiancé, will you take us down to see the Queen? To pay for such a kindness, it's the least that I can do. I'll sing my song and safely sink your ship and all your crew. If anyone knows the truth about this giant pearl, it's the Queen of the Sea. If it leads us to another one of the orbs, it's worth helping, wouldn't you say? Thank you, thank you, all of you. I'd be indebted to you. If you could try to find him in the town of Lona Lulu. I'll mark the village on your map. It's to the south of Hotto. A beautiful blue bay behind an isolated grotto. My Kai is a famous fisherman, as ragged as the ocean. A hunky, chunky sailor stuffed with smouldering emotion. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh. oh, now I'm all embarrassed. <laughs> Don't tell him what I said. Just bring my darling back so we can finally be wed. <laughs> Pretty cool, actually. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like we are going to be going back. And off to Lonolulu. Okay, so we gotta go all the way around. Heavens! There's the, the Trip Yggdrasil area, way over there. Pretty cool. Looks like it's gonna rain.
a little further. Another day, another victory. Practice Pummeler, awarded for claiming victory in at least 250 battles. Almost looks like some ships are there. Interesting. Made our way to Honolulu. Always fun starting a new area. Ooh, a well. But it is boarded up. Wave weed. A seaside paradise that Shell tells me is home to the prettiest pearls in all the world. <gasps> Ooh, pearls! <gasps> Bright blue waves, pure white sands, and fabulous jewels just lying on the beach. <gasps> Truly, darlings, this is the promised land. Although it does seem a little less promising than I expected, where is everybody? Something's not right here. Still, it's not our problem. Let's just find this Kai guy and get out of here. Cool spot, like a little vacation area almost. Tropical paradise. Air fully brings.
Yeah, that would help Jade, Veronica, or Rab even. Give those to Jade. go to the bank area. Just because we have quite a bit of money, I think. All these little children? Well... the recipe book. Mermaids are easily recognized, their upper halves taking the forms of human women, and the lower halves those of fish. Oh, interesting. This is taking the darker approach to the mermaid, of how they are trying to essentially drag you down into the ocean. Spectacular. We've got another seed. Just a little bit. I wonder if they are just waiting for something bad to happen. We have the ships over there, we have a cannoneer over here. Makes me wonder what would have happened.
thinking sense. What is thinking sense? Peculiar plant with an enlightening odor. Interesting. Okay, so we just have to make our way over to the church. Treasure Hunter, in exchange for a couple of my best maps and charts, and listed the aid of the first fish, finest fisherman here. Interesting. manure. That's lovely. Not sure what we would forge with that. And yeah, that's just the armor shop. I think it's the big area over here. I think we've pretty much explored this whole area. <laughs> look, look! Auntie's here! The show's about to begin! <laughs> Are you all paying attention? Good. Then I'll tell you the tale of the terrible curse that befell our village long ago. The curse of a crafty creature with a face as pretty as a pearl, but a heart as black as coal. Now, let's begin. Once upon a time, a master fisherman lived in Lanalulu. He caught more fish and gathered more pearls than any of the other men in the village. The mayor of Lanalulu, the big kahuna, was very fond of this fisherman and offered him the hand of his beloved daughter. 
the fisherman and the kahuna's daughter agreed to be married, and the future of the village looked bright. Until the day of the storm. The fisherman was caught up in a terrible tempest, and he and his catch were thrown into the ocean. As he sank through the water, he saw the pearls he had gathered shining like stars all around him. The light faded, and he prepared to meet his maker. But instead, he met her. A mermaid more beautiful than any creature he had seen before. She held him in her arms and whispered in his ear, I will give you your life if you give me your soul. Taking a dark turn right here. Many days passed and the fisherman did not return. The people of the village thought him dead and held a funeral for him on the beach. But just as they were beginning to sing his soul into the next world, he appeared, exhausted but alive. The Kahuna's daughter was overjoyed to have her beloved home and stayed by his bedside night and day, nursing him back to health. But the fisherman was no longer the man she knew. All day he would stare out to sea, muttering over and over, I must marry that mermaid. Then one day he threw his fiancée aside and ran to the harbor screaming, I must go back to her. The kahuna was furious. He banished the fisherman from the village and burned his boat so he could never set sail again. And so, the man who was once the pride of Lonolulu spent the rest of his days alone on Saikiki Beach, haunted by the mermaid who stole his soul. Very interesting. That's all for today, children. I'll tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. Mermaids are scary! Whoa! The mermaid's coming to steal our souls! Run! <laughs> Aloha, friends. Is there anything I can do for you? Maybe. We're looking for a fisherman called Kai. Do you know where we can find him? Oh, my! What a coincidence! You must be looking for my son, Kainui. Are you friends of his? I'm afraid he's not here at the moment. All the men have sailed west to fight the giant squid that's been attacking our ships. If you want to hurry things along, maybe you could go lend a hand. Once that monster's dealt with, they'll all come back to the village, sure enough. But be wary, friends. That squid isn't the only danger out on the seas. Don't let a crafty mermaid make you all pupule. I'd hate to see you go crazy. Hmm, makes you question if our mermaid friend is good or bad, actually. past 30 minutes on this one, so I think we're going to call it. In our next episode, we're going to be sailing west from Lonolulu and help the villagers deal with the giant squid. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and we'll be talking again real soon.